boy, oh boy. It's my favorite time of the week when I get to come on here and tell folks how they're going to live through this apocalypse. Now, you might be wondering, um, who is you and why you think you're going to be qualified to talk about what's going on in the apocalypse? And let me tell you right now. <laughs> my name is Lester Phipps, and I have been building a bunker in my backyard outside Baton Rouge, Louisiana for the last, oh, 15 years, ever since I became an adult in 2005. And you might be thinking, came an adult in 2005, you look like you was about 42. And say, I say, well, hey, I don't look that young. <laughs> I don't look that young. Now, uh, when, I'm, when I say I became an adult, what I mean is I realized it's time to make sure that nothing like what happened in 2005 happens to my family ever again. Becoming an adult to me is learning. You got to prepare. You got to be a doomsday prepper because Hurricane Katrina could happen any day. Any day could be Hurricane Katrina Day if you're not careful. So I choose to be careful, as, as careful as it can be, in fact. <clears throat> now, uh, you might be thinking, hey, this stream that you're coming to me on is uh, the Pack Theater stream, which is a comedy theater. And yes, that's true. Uh, it seems like throughout the history of my life, comedy theaters have been the places that are most likely to let me speak. I do go to a lot of open mics prior to, uh, to all the COVIDs. I was going to open mics regularly because at open mics, I can get a stage in which I can say, hey, hello. How's you gonna prepare for an apocalypse? You're not doing it right if you're not thinking about what's most important, which is obviously Louisiana culture. <laughs> I mean, come on, you don't, you don't, you don't become a man like me uh, uh, not thinking about Louisiana culture. Now, uh, uh, big focus for me uh, now that I'm on this stream here is, is giving back to the community that gave to me. You know, Pack Theater's given me this forum to make sure you all know how you're gonna survive an apocalypse. So why don't you, if you got spare cash in this time of need, uh, Toss a little dollars at the Pack Theater's Venmo, at Pack-Theater on Venmo. Uh, support the theater that's supporting live comedy and also live apocalypse tips with Lester Pips. So, <clears throat> as I was saying, the most important thing to me is Louisiana culture. And of course, when I say Louisiana culture, there's only one thing that comes to mind. You can all say it with me at home, okay? The recipe and all necessary ingredients to Popeye's Louisiana Kitchen Spicy Chicken Strips. And that's what I'm trying to preserve. That's what I'm trying to bring into the future. I'm trying to make sure that no American, after all, any kind of apocalypse, has to experience not having the joy of Popeye's Louisiana Chicken Spicy Chicken Strips. So, uh, well, I was going door to door to every franchise location on my tours around the country doing these talks, knocking on them, saying, hey, can I get uh, the recipe, please? And they would often say, uh, no, we're not allowed to give that out. Why don't you try calling the corporate hotline? Well, I wouldn't call the corporate hotline then, but I sure will right now. Um, so let me do that. We're going to do that. Here we go. Calling Popeyes. I'm going to put them on speaker so y'all can hear the call too, because we're doing this together. Now, if you've watched this show before, you may notice that frequently they don't answer. And that is because I believe I'm on the list. They're aware of me. And they try not to give it away. We'll see what happens. Let's see, that was a ring. It means we're still in business. It still could happen. All right. One, we've gotten to five rings now, if I was counting correctly, which means the chances are slim. But we're going to go two more rings after this one. Two more rings. We'll give them two more rings to answer. Come on, Popeyes. That's, we only got one more ring. Come on. Do it for me, please. Come on. I guess I should have asked them to do it for America, but I was being selfish, which let me tell you one thing about surviving in an apocalypse. Try not to be too selfish, except about the things that you need to survive, in which case be as selfish as you need. <clears throat> now, speaking of not being selfish, I had a few uh, listeners to previous episodes. Come on here and tell me, hey, uh, I got some questions for you. Uh, and by come on here and tell me, I mean they sent them to my publicist, Ezra Parter. If you do have any questions for me, uh, send them to him, Ezra Parter, on Instagram. You can DM him whatever you want. He will uh, tell me to read it on the show. So um, uh, from uh, at MJ Kumar 7 uh, I got a question that is, uh, are condoms PPE? Now, <laughs> no, no, I don't know. I'm not a medical professional. But what I will tell you is, if you're doing your bunker right, you're not having condoms, okay? Because a bunker is a place to reforge society for post-apocalypse. Now, what kind of society does not have little babies? A bad one, right? So don't bring condoms into your bunker because you're gonna need to repopulate the earth, okay? Don't even think about it. Now, another question I got uh, comes to me from at Ella Francis. How is dating and quarantine going? 
now I'll say this, um, uh, for me, uh, dating in quarantine has been, uh, pretty hard because my wife won't come down into the bunker. She's, uh, she's up in the house. Um, she's still mad at me for a lot of things. And, uh, she won't come down to the bunker, so I haven't been able to date her at all. Also, we are separated, and she is seeing other people. So it's been rough, I'll say that. Now, uh, 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 another question from Greg David Jones is um, talk about toilet paper, which I'll tell you this, okay? If you haven't figured out what a bidet is yet, <laughs> you're making a mistake. Because think about this, okay? A bidet is multipurpose, all right? If you get two bidets, you can use one for your butthole and one to pump barbecue sauce uh, and put that right on your Popeye's Louisiana chicken spike chicken strip. Now you are going to have to get the recipe and all Mexican ingredients is to learn how to make them. <laughs> but you was already trying to do that anyway if he's doing the, the apocalypse right. Now, a last question. Uh, uh, a last question comes to me from, uh, who boy, uh, let me see if I remember the name. Uh, yeah, oh, I do. Uh, at not necessarily Sarah uh, says, how does this apocalypse compare to previous apocalypses? Well, I'll tell you this. Uh, compared to Hurricane Katrina, honestly, the initial stay in the bunker has been longer, but I think that the lasting damage is also going to be worse. So this, I would say this, worse than Katrina. Worse than Katrina, for sure. Uh, and Katrina is what made me a doomsday prepper in the first place. So you know what that means? This is pretty bad. And I hope it, hopefully, though, Silver Lining makes a lot more doomsday preppers. A lot more people trying to preserve them spot chicken trips. So that'd be good. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> I don't just do this show by myself, as you may or may not know. Uh, if you are here watching and in the comments, uh, feel free to ask any more questions you might have of me or any questions you might have for my upcoming guests, which I'm going to get into them right now. Um, my first guest, uh, my first guest I met at a boating supply store. I was, I was down at a boating supply store doing an open mic there because, uh, as you may know, in some places, boating supply stores is where it's happening. Uh, mostly Florida. I don't remember exactly where this one was, but I'm sure we'll find out. Um, uh, so uh, uh, let's give no further ado, which is something that, uh, you know, people in old timey theaters would say, but also something that I say, apparently, uh, to, uh, to welcome Monica Moni Bags. Monica Moni. Moni, thanks for being here. Lester, thank you for having me. Hi, it's great to see you again. I feel like it was just yesterday when we met at that West Marine in Newport Beach. Oh, that's right. It was Newport Beach, California. That's right. I, I always forget where it was. Oh, my God. And it's so I've been thinking about that lately because I just had to move to my beach house in Newport because, right. you know, way less cases over there. I just feel safer. And it's just like if I can't go out, I might as well be, you know, comfortable at Comfortable well, use, one in my of them, home. use one of them people with options outside of just a bunker. You got like a house, a bunker, and a beach house. Oh my gosh, yes. And we have a panic room in the beach house just oh. in case we're prepared. And it's just like, it's just, it makes you think about what's important. And I just, it, you need the necessities, which is why I bought as many as I could when my husband, who works in the finance, in finance, he told me, mm. you know, things are coming if you got to be prepared so i bought up all the toilet paper i could find i bought oh. up all the paper towels okay all the disinfectant and i then i realized i have too much i just can't fit it all in the house in hancock park i can't fit it all in the beach house in newport i can't fit it out in our bunker in montana <laughs> what am i gonna do with it well i don't know maybe give it I, to the poor oh I, I thought about that but it's just like i Mm, no, thank you. Uh, so I've been starting up a little, you know, Instagram shop. If you're running low, just let you know, I can show you. Oh, yeah, you know, I just please. Like, yeah. Yeah, just this one roll of toilet paper. It's it's quality stuff, three-ply. And if you three just ply. want that one roll, three-ply, <laughs> we got the secret, you know, it's a little, I'll never, I'll never divulge my secret. And Probably if you just want that roll... Piece. Your secret's probably buying three-ply toilet paper. Mm hmm but I won't tell you my sources. Oh, and, okay, okay. You know, and if you just want that one roll of uh, three-ply, you can, $20, and we can have it delivered Ooh. to your home. What? That's incredibly expensive. Is you kidding me? Well, That's so expensive. I hardly think so. I mean, it's just expensive, you might call it, but, you know, it 
pricey for some, but it's just the cost of quality. And you know, it's just, it's just the Nate, it's the free hand of the market. And it's just one of the ugly truths of the situation. See, right I should now. have known this from when I first met you at, at that boat and supply store, because you were at the boat and supply store trying to sell people water to boat on. Yes, but oh my God, have you ever boated on crystal clear distilled water? It, there is nothing like it. I have not. Nothing I only like boat it. on the Mississippi Delta. Oh my God, the Mississippi Delta. Do you know the Boer Guards that live in, do you know the Boer Guards? They live in the French, the French Quarter. Are you oh, familiar? I have been to the French Quarter a number of times. That's in New Orleans. I, I spent most of my time in Baton Rouge, but I have been down in New Orleans and I did go to the French Quarter. And you know what I saw down there was people playing the trombone, which was pretty cool. Oh my God, the trombone. Just, it's a beautiful instrument. And I just, I, I, I have a, tr our, I'm, been, I'm sorry, I'm just upset. We had our own, you know, in-house band and we had to let Did them you know? go because of social distancing. Wow, not yes. enough room in your place to, to give them ho housing? No, it's filled with toilet paper. Oh no, so you, you just kicked out yeah. real people to have a little bit of extra toilet paper? <laughs> I mean, it's just you, like you said in your opening, we just, the things we need to survive need to take a priority. I did say that, but I didn't, when I said it, I was thinking more like Popeye's Luigi and Chicken Spike Chicken Strip. Not so much um, the things that all human, like that, that like basic necessities like toilet paper. But I, I suppose, I suppose that's a conundrum that I've just walked myself into because chicks, them splits the chicken strip, that's a, that's a basic necessity too. What would I Papa's do? Let's see. chicken strips. Yeah. That's so in, that's so cute. I love it. It's very quaint. I do find them cute. I've, I'm, I'm very attracted to them and I, I like them very much. Now, uh, what, how would you say you're getting by? I mean, it sounds like you, you're trying to sell a lot of toilet paper, but is you selling it? Is it getting off them shelves? I, you know, a fair bit. Certain if some people just know quality when they see it. And then mm. some people, I, Word from some customers, I'm desperate and have run out of options, which it's so good to be somebody's, you know, lifeline in a moment of need. I guess. I mean, it sounds like what you're doing is, is uh, taking the need and exploiting it in a way that's going to make you rich and other people real have real trouble. It's, oh, well, I would say that we are comfortable, but I would never say rich. It's so... Oh my God. Well, I mean, it sounds like you're a person that's got a house, a, a beach house in Newport Beach, in addition to what I assume must be a nice bunker, uh, because if he's rich, you've got to have a good bunker. Um, but It's a comfortable bunker, yes. Yeah. Where is it? Oh, that one is in Montana. Uh, oh, we, right. It's for tax, re tax reasons. Ah, and smart. my husband just loves his ranch. Oh, my God. And the horses. I miss those horses. Oh, my oh, God. Oh, wow. You got a ranch with horses? It's it's been really hard. It's been really hard not being able to be with my sweet horses. And you, it makes you realize what's important and the struggle. Yeah. So the horses is what's important to you. The horse, yeah. But luckily we've been able to keep on our ranch hand, Jonesy. And Jonesy is able to maintain the horse as well. That's good. Yeah. I, hope he's, I hope he's social distancing up there, not, not having to you know, like sleep outside because there's so much toilet paper inside his apartment or something. <laughs> Uh, well, what are you, psychic, Lester? He, we, he has a, a nice little tent, a nice tent that we paid for so that we wouldn't have to worry about the paper towels getting wet. Oh, no. Paper towels, too? Man, people need them for, eating, for touching their food because you got to not touch your food if it's got maybe COVIDs on it. You can eat it, but you can't touch it. That's how I understand the rules. Uh, I, I'm not a scientist, so I won't pretend to know. Uh, I. I'm just a woman who is just worried for her family and is doing everything she can to protect them. Hey, fair enough. You know, it sounds like mm -hmm. you're doing everything you can to protect your family while also making sure other families are less protected. But you got to do what you got to do. Now, are you living with family right now? Does other people in, in this Newport Beach place with you? Yes. My loving husband is just in the next room having his little... He gets to bed early. He has to work. He works so hard. Oh, making us doing? money. He, he's doing finance still. They're still doing finance in the finance. Yes. Uh, and so he has been losses. working. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's hurting everybody. And it's such a shame. And 
But lucky for us, because my husband works in finance, we don't have any money in the stock market. So we are unaffected by this in any way. You put it all into, into paper products, it sounds like. In paper, we are in, we are very paper right now. Yes, <laughs> and uh, we're we are comfortable. We're comfortable. Okay, okay. So it's you, it's your husband. You got your horses up in Montana. You got you got Jonesy staying outside. Which oh man, I hope it doesn't rain. I really. He's hope it t- he rain. loves the outdoors. Jonesy loves the outdoors. I'm sure. Where'd you find Jonesy? Is he somebody who applied for a job or somebody you found somewhere? Oh wow, Jonesy. Well, we found him. He was on a runaway horse in Montana, and we oh. just saw him. He was approaching a cliff at at a speed I've never seen. It was I, I my heart stopped. I tell you right now, Lester, my heart stopped. Would you say and it we was saw at him or approaching breakneck speeds? Approaching, because I would say his neck did not break. Okay, that's good. Um, Yes, and uh, he, he, th- he threw himself over the horse and was able to come and pull it from the edge. And we thought, that is a man who is capable of running our ranch. And wow. then and we thought we had, to, we had to give him an offer. He couldn't refuse. We, had, we found out where he worked. He worked, at a, you know, he worked at a children's hospital saving lives and has, he was uh, doing very well. Uh, and he, we realized we're going to pay him more to work at our ranch to keep our purebred horses clean and shovel, shovel their manure because that oh, wow. is more important uh, wow, so you, to me. You, you found what he was doing. You decided you didn't care about it and liked what you wanted more. And then you actually offered to pay him more money, which I was afraid this was going to be some kind of like forced servitude situation because based on your, your behavior so far, I think you was probably one of them rich assholes. But uh, well, you actually pay the man what he's worth. I'm on board with that. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, we are kind of limited by, you know, the free hand of the market. If we didn't sure. pay him more, he wouldn't sh- move. And, you know, like stink, those stinking labor laws. What am I going to? Of course we're going to pay him. Well, oh I'm God. no Montana lawyer, but I will say I'm glad them labor laws is protecting Jonesy a little bit. Mm-hmm. That children's hospital did get shut down, though. Oh, I don't. I think it was, I know, it was such a strange coincidence. He was, you know, the head of the, he ran the hospital. And then about what? three what weeks later, it was shut down. He was the chief of medicine. Oh, and my God. I don't know what happened. I guess there weren't a lot of doctors in rural Montana. And so the hospital shut down right after. It's such a shame. Man, to go from chief of medicine to horseman, I mean, damn, that's a transition I, as far as I know. Uh, mm-hmm. Speaking of transitions, uh, I do need to quickly ask you another question, which is uh, now that you's at your now that you's at your Newport Beach place and you got Jonesy up there at the Montana place, where's your where's your normal house and who's there? My normal house is in Hancock Park, the neighborhood in Los Angeles. Oh damn, and that's a good neighborhood. We're comfortable, yeah. and it is filled. Many listeners who are not LA savvy. Um, by we're comfortable, she means she rich. She got a big old mansion. I would not say that. We're comfortable. Oh my uh-huh. gosh! Stop. I'll say it for you. Oh my god, you're 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 a you're a nut, Lester. Oh my god. So we have the uh, we have boarded it up. We had to. Oh yeah. Unfortunately, we boarded it up uh, and we filled it with supplies and we had to furlough. Unfortunately, we had to furlough all of our staff that maintains the household. Oh no. They could have just it was stayed a shame. in the house. Uh, yes, but you know, in these uncertain times, we had to we had to make the call. And you know, now these people have the opportunity to find work elsewhere instead of sin- sitting in an empty house doing nothing. Boy, I sure hope they do because most likely there's no jobs for them to find. But uh, man, I wish them good luck. And if any of you listeners know any of the people who used to work for, for Money Bags here, um, you know, just tell them I send my, my good wishes because there's not really nothing else I can do for them. But also tell them uh, their, their boss is mean. Now, Moni, um, we do have to, to get to some other guests. And it, as I understand, you told me you only had a little bit of time because you was doing a big sale. Yes, we're having a big blowout sale. We, can, we have these Clorox wipes 
forty dollars a canister, but not but just special tonight, thirty five dollars a canister. Well, that so is hit cheaper, me up. But it's not very much cheaper now. Um, gosh, I don't want to give you a platform to sell your stuff that's so overpriced, but I do want people to be able to get it if they need it. So, where would they go to find you? If they were to find my well valued and well priced items, they can find a. Uh, my, you know, my little errand girl I have, she sets it up because I don't really understand the Instagrams. Oh. At, at necessarily Sarah. Sarah, oh. she's a sweetheart. She, she does all my gopher work. At not necessarily Sarah. All right. Well, great. Hey, uh, uh, Moni, thank you so much for being here. You, you get off to, to dealing with your, Sarah, your sale. And, uh, you know, uh, if we ever talk again, hopefully it's in happier times when maybe all your employees aren't forced out of their homes. Uh, the same to you, Lester. Thank you very much. Thank you for boys. having me. Yes. <laughs> well, maybe one day. Nah, I would love to have some employees, but yes, uh, you, you have a, you, you, you can go now. <laughs> you take care now. You take care. You, hey, you take care. Now, uh, boy, that was interesting. It seems like she um, is mean and bad, but you know, so different people, different, different strokes, as they say, right? Uh, now I got some in the comments here. Let me, uh, I should move this over to this screen so I don't have to look over there. Um, in the comments here, I'm seeing, we got, uh, actually, uh, they're, they're all about the previous show. So listen, if you're listening and you want to comment on anything, please do. I, I'd love to read it. I'll say who you are and, and read it. And if you got any questions about how you're going to survive an apocalypse or any questions for any of my guests, uh, I would be happy to ask them for you. Now, <clears throat> you may be thinking, Hey, behind you, I see a bunker that doesn't look like the same bunker as last week. And that's because... I don't want to share what my bunker looks like because I don't want anybody getting any ideas that there's a weak spot in it that they could come in here through. So I'm, I'm showing a different bunker every, every week. This one, it appears to be a, a little bit communist, a little bit rundown. Uh, maybe something straight out of the movie uh, with Brad Pitt. Oh, 12 Monkeys. That's the one. Might be, might be out of that. But that's not important. What's important is it's time for our next guest. Now, our next guest is somebody who I met outside of a club. He was passing out flyers. I had just been inside that club doing a little bit of uh, uh, open mic. Uh, I was going to say open mic comedy. Obviously, I'm not doing comedy. I'm doing important work. But, uh, but there was comedy happening in there other than me. Um, that's Nick Private. Nick Private, Nick, thank you for joining us. Come on in. Nick, how you doing? Thank you for being here. I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me on your show, Lester. Yeah, absolutely. Now you was when I met you, you was passing out flyers. Are you still doing that? Well, um, I am still passing out flyers. I'm also still doing a, t a tour circuit. Um, I'm still right now. We've got a lot of distractions with the coronavirus, and a lot of people's focus on those conspiracies. And we've uh -oh. kind of forgotten about one of the larger ones, the flat Earth. And I kind of feel like NASA released this virus to cause a distraction from the truth, which is flat Earth. Oh boy! So you use a. Oh, uh, that's right. I forgot about what was on the pamphlets and what was on them. Well, the flyers, pamphlets, whatever, you, whatever you want to call them. What was on them was all this screed about how the Earth is real flat. And I gotta tell you, man, as somebody who's dug inside the Earth and built a bunker, I hope not, because if it's flat, then I don't know where I'm digging to. Well, th yes, theoretically, you know, you could uh, dig to the bottom and fall out of the bottom of the Earth. I hope not. Um, but it's like it's like a thousand miles thick. So it's a not, thousand not miles. That's mm -hmm. So would you say that the, the Earth is more like a like a thin crust or a deep dish? I would say like a regular crust. Oh yeah. Okay. Right. Although sometimes it's a deep dish because uh, we are circulated by a large ice wall, mm. thousands of feet high, and that's what helps keep keep the oceans in. Boy, I sure wish we had our last guest on here to talk about how she ever boated into an ice wall, but I don't think she ever did because I don't think the earth is flat. I'm gonna tell you right now. But uh, but but look, I gotta I gotta I know I know we're gonna have that as a point of contention. I know you're gonna argue with me there, and we can get into that. But I gotta ask. Um, you said you were still flying, even during the COVIDs. Uh, yeah, but we're it's because it's an essential service that people know about the flat Earth. Is it though? Because I feel like what you're doing and doing that is putting people at risk. Well, no. See, the people who've been putting people at risk are NASA. NASA has been poisoning the minds of the American people to keep their heliocentric sun-worshipping system in place. Oh. While help, it, that is just controlling and limiting what people can do. So flat earthers are really people who are out there to try and get people to be free.
Because once you know the truth, then you're free. Once you know the truth of the Popeye's uh, tender strips, <laughs> to your recipe. They is, they is called Popeye's Louisiana Chicken Spiked Chicken Strip. And, they, and if you get that wrong, I mean, I don't know what I'm supposed to tell you. But I do have a question for you coming from my chat room here, which is uh, uh, Griff209 wants to know, what's the point of the flat earth thing? Like, if, if so, what if the earth is flat? How does that affect your life? It affects your life because you've been lied to. You've that's, been told that you mm. live on this globe that's speeding through space, mm. you know, and you're just indoctrinated with it as, as a youth. So knowing how the earth really is begins to expose the secrets that people are, are controlling, your Masons, the Rothschilds, the uh, Illuminati, oh, uh, yeah. the Pac Theater is one no. of them. The Pac Theater's doing but, it? The Pac yeah, Theater's the Pac very influential. There's no way normally that that many talented people could be coming out of one theater. Hey, it's obviously, nah. it is a CIA and Warner Brothers working together. Wow. That, no, now that's a conspiracy I never heard, but I absolutely believe. But this flat yeah. earth thing I'm having a real problem with. Because listen, if the earth is flat, then, uh, okay, think about it this way. You were saying that the globe is hurtling through space, right? Where's that flat yeah. earth going? How's it going? Is it a car? Is the it a flat, flat earth car? is... The the flat earth is stationary. If you just think about it a little bit, if I put a couple little holes in a baseball and filled that with water and then threw it, that water would fly out of that baseball. We still have all of our lakes and oceans. The proof is just right in front of you that, you know, you just need to have it pointed out. Okay, but like the relative gravity of water versus a baseball is not the same as the relative gravity of water versus the core of the earth. Right, correct. But the the lakes and the oceans are larger than the holes that I can put in a baseball. It's all relative in size. Ooh, but boy. again, the flat earth isn't moving. It's stationary. It's very centric. And the sun and the moon, they rotate around us. Mm. Well, uh, look, uh, we can debate that flat earth thing all day because it sounds like you're real entrenched in your views and I'm real entrenched in reality. So we're, we're going to be at odds there. But I got to find out more about this, this flyer and you've been doing, even though we're in COVID. Is there people out there taking the flyers from you? There are people taking the flyers. Oftentimes I fanged out they're already flat earthers. That tracks. Um, and, and so, but I mean, it's nice to see they're out and being supportive. I suppose so. I suppose so. you can say that as uh, you can speak of that as if it was nice I, in a certain way. Now, uh, I do have a, a, a question for me in the chat. I hate to interrupt you while you're going, but it's an important question. Mm -hmm. um, Godzi and Burns okay. wants to know if I put sauce on the chicken strips. And look, I'm going to give you an opportunity to answer this first. When you get your Popeye's Louisiana chicken pie, do you put sauces on them, uh, uh, Nick? This is a question for you, Nick. You ever put sauce on them chicken shrimp? You know, Nick brings up a good point. Because if you you're do Nick. put... No, you're Nick. The question comes from Gosling I'm Burns. Nick. Yeah, yeah, you're Nick oh, Private, okay. remember? <laughs> I am Nick Private. I'm just letting you know that, that he made a really good argument that if you take a chicken strip and you dip it in the dip, and then you throw it, that dip comes off. That's true. Unless it's a good dip. It if it's comes a good flying off. Dip, now, if you... And, so, I tell you this... But it's, you know, it's oftentimes a chicken strip is much closer to a globe than it is to a flat, like, say, pizza. Oh, uh, okay. Now, see, this is one of the great advantages of a Popeye's. You know, in a Popeye's, you're very, very, very likely to find a good flat chicken strip. You're not going to get any kind of round balls. But when you do, it's extra crunchy, and it's kind of a nice surprise. Now, for me... Uh, what I do when I'm there is I like to use the, the buffalo sauce, the Bayou Buffalo, because it reminds me of my home in the Bayou. Now, you might be thinking, aren't you from Baton Rouge? That's not the Bayou. Don't worry about it. Don't question it. Um, uh, but I do have to say about that, that is actually why I prefer the, the Bayou Buffalo to say like a like a like a uh, uh, a black and ranch you know because the bayou buffalo that sauce is 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 congeals a little bit right onto the chicken strip it doesn't fly off when you throw a chicken strip now i will i know what you're thinking no i have never thrown a chicken strip i would not waste it but i have seen him be thrown in a food fight in the popeyes which let me tell you that was a travesty unlike any i've ever seen before and i survived hurricane katrina now <laughs> I, I believe it's quite the controversy it would be horrible mm-hmm one of those chicken strips could one of those chicken strips could could put your eye out, and then since it's spicy, it would also burn. Very true. Very true. Very true. 
Now, um, so it sounds like what you've been doing during this during this quarantine period is not quarantining and instead still going outside. As you, so you're a flat earther, but as you also the kind of person. You, oh, that's right. You said you, you don't believe in the COVIDs because you, you think they're trying to distract from the flat Earth. Right. Well, I believe there's a COVID virus, but I believe it was a product of the CIA, the NSA, NASA, and a bunch of other ones that have A's in it that put this virus together to mm. distract people because flat earthers were getting the truth out there. We are a large growing group. I know that frightens some people, but our, we are growing exponentially every year, the number of believers we have in the flat earth. Is that true? That is data absolutely that true. Yes, I do. You can look back and, and just a few years ago, we had 53,000 followers uh. Uh, on my podcast and now I have a million point three. Wow. Okay. That's growth. That's, yeah. uh, that's, that's, uh, you said 53 to a million. That's a lot of growth. I don't, I'm not doing the math. I'm choosing not to, cause I don't have to our, do what our, I don't want to do. Our goal is just to expose people to the idea. And then once that little kernel of truth knowledge mm. embeds in their brains, it blossoms out into a beautiful tree that would live on a flat earth. Well, that's that's very interesting. I, I do disagree with uh, the, the idea that you still going out, you know, because what you should be doing is holding up your bunker, trying to find a recipe for Papa do scripture. And if you're not doing that, uh, well, I don't I don't know what to tell you. But, you know, at the same time, I also do understand having something you care about. I believe in very much. I mean, look at you. Look at all the beautiful engineering you did behind you. What kind of floor did you make is a flat one. That's what God did with the earth. He made a flat earth. So, you, oh wait, so this is a God-centric theory where there's God involved in the flat earth? God made himself a, a regular crust pizza earth? Yes, or he made, he did not make himself. He made the earth like a regular crusted pizza. <laughs> Probably with like pepperoni and mushrooms, very classic earth. Um, I, I see, I see what you're saying. I guess, yeah, it's, you could even call that maybe, uh, 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 it wouldn't be a Supreme Earth. Supreme's a different Earth. Supreme's an Earth that's got that peppers on it too. Um, but I, I think Supreme Earth would be something that would be in the Marvel Universe. That's true. That's true. Or like Nazi propaganda. But, um, we do have a question in the chat, which is from another question from, from, Oh, I'm sorry. There was one. Oh, Gazi and Burns said something that I got to address real quick, which is um, they said that after all this, they're going to go out there and throw a chicken strip. Well, please don't do that. Please don't, don't waste them. If no, you do throw a chicken strip, make sure it comes from like a church chicken or somewhere that's not a pop-up. Now, um, on plus, he says they go into the beaches this weekend, which, uh, you know, maybe Nick, mm -hmm. you go to the beach, you, you give them a pamphlet, you both get COVIDs and die. Well, that's the problem is, is they're not letting a lot of the truth know because the earth is flat everything sinks down. So if you've mm. noticed, the tall people were the ones who were getting sick first. I and didn't notice the that. the shorter people who were getting sick more. So wait, the tall people are getting sick first, but the shorter people are getting sick more? If they get, yeah, because there's more of them. And then as that goes down, so the air clears up above the tall people first. So as long as he's decent sized, he'll be completely fine at the beach. Interesting. Now, I don't know who Unfussy is, but if they decent size, I guess they'll be okay. I got one more question for you. It comes to me from Griff 209. He says, uh, uh, oops, how old do you think the earth is and are fossils real? Well, Unfussy says he's six foot five, but please answer the question. Of course, uh, fossils are real. Um, the museums really made them uh, so that they could just put the dinosaurs together oh. and tell us the earth was a certain age. It, it is part of the whole the whole thing, and the and the the earth, the earth as far as I've been able to prove it, as far mm -hmm. as I can show you, and what I actually believe, because nobody's shown me anything different, mm -hmm. um, is that the earth has been around since I was born. Wow! Now, if somebody can if somebody can take me to a place and show me that something existed there before, then I would believe well, it. We don't have time travel yet, but I hope that I one day discover it so I can go back to when the Popeye's Louisiana Chichigo was invented and make sure I get the recipe before they put it in the, the, the secret vault where they're not letting me live. Now, it's Nick, good. Stay skeptical. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, yeah. Nick, I got I to gotta move on from you. I, I've given you more time than I meant to. I, I like talking to you. This was fun. But, uh, you know, stick around. If you do have questions for my future guests, feel free to ask them. Um, but we do need to get to our next guest. Uh, our next guest uh, uh, our next guest comes to us from uh, from the Outback, actually. I, I met this this nice lady at an open mic in the Outback. I was, I was in Australia doing a, doing a, doing a my tour through the Outback, and, uh, and there she was. Now, this is Claire Thrills. Claire, thank you for joining us. Please jump on. G'day, mate. How you going? Hi. Uh, go, go. Oh, boy. The, the accent is contagious. Nope. I didn't get it. But, I, you know, oh, I'm man. from Louisiana. I don't know how to do Australia. Now, uh, I'm going good. How, how are you going? Mate, I'm going pretty well in Leicester. I have to say, as your biggest fan from down under... It is an absolute honour to be here today. You oh. are an inspiration down here. And I do have to say, uh, coming to you guys uh, from the future, it is Wednesday in Australia. It's Wednesday here. Oh, yeah. And the future's, um, it's looking pretty bleak, to be honest. Is it? It looks like you're outside yeah, in the sun. Mate, I'm always outside. Is that All right? of our bunkers are above ground. We've got a nice collection of above ground bunkers here. Uh, we're taking this apocalypse pretty seriously. Uh, we've been uh, well prepared and we're, we've gone back to the old ways. Well, okay. Now I got so many follow-up questions to all that because you said just bunkers is not underground, which makes them not bunkers at all, but rather just like houses. But then you also said that you've gone back <laughs> to the old ways and boy, oh boy, do I want to know more about what that is. Oh, mate, mate. Have I got some tips for you, Lester Pips? All righty. Numero uno. That means number one in Spanish. Yeah. I learned that. No, I knew that. There's it people who speak Spanish here in Louisiana. Oh, there is? Yeah. Oh, never been there, so I don't know. Um, oh, you got to uh, come. Yeah. Oh, is that an invitation, Lester? Yeah. Come on down to the bunker. You know, you're always welcome. Sweet. <laughs> I'll come and self-isolate with you then, eh? Well, no, it's going to have to wait because you can't get on a plane and uh, there's a whole lot of self-isolating right. you got to do right now. But in the future, when we're all allowed to hang out, come on, hang out. Yeah. Um, all right. Number one, I've got a bone yeah. to pick with you. One, oh. yes, bunkers above ground. I've got one. So they do exist. I've got a bunker. It's above ground. It's an above ground bunker. Boom. How so? How so? Well, I built a bunker and I built it above ground. Apocalypse, no one's around. It's here. I'm in my bunker. I'm safe. I'm protected from the COVIDs. I've been netting the COVIDs. I've got some COVIDs. Ain't no COVID going to get me. Okay. Well, as long as you're safe from a COVID, I guess it counts as a bunker. Uh, but I do, I do say if he's not Excuse on the me, ground, mate. he's not really doing the job. But I, I accept. I accept what you're doing. Thanks, man. means a lot. I've been taking all your other tips too. In terms of the old ways, whoa, yeah. these Amish guys, they've got it. They've got it down. You guys should take some tips from them. But do I have some tips for you? Grow all your own stuff because I don't want to get caught up with Miss Hoosie Watsits toilet paper shenanigans. Oh, I don't know yeah. what she's going on there, but that is expensive. And I don't know about you guys, but in the future here, we ain't got no economy. Nobody ain't got no money. So we can't buy any of that stuff. So you know what? I've got myself a toilet paper tree. You do. Don't need to order nothing off Instagram now. It's a little, <laughs> and you're good. All right. Oh yeah, that leaf seems awful small, but maybe you're just doing some clean poops right now, so that's good for you. Look, yeah. Oh, I am pretty regular. They do come in different sizes. Oh, this is right. A large on. size. Yeah. yeah. You use that one after your morning coffee. Uh, I suppose so. Yeah. I mean, that might that might do it. I, you know, you yeah. eat enough chicken strips, your your poops get interesting. I'll tell you that much. But I do have some questions for you in the chat oh, real mate. quick. I, I'd love to get to, I know you have more you want to say, but just real quick. Uh, 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 Unfussy said, um, when you say bunker above ground, do you mean a cargo container? Oh, hey, look, I, I don't want to give away too shed. many of my secrets. Okay, fair enough. I think that what? was a dig at the way your shed looks. Calling your shed a cargo Wait. container. Look behind you. It looks like a cargo container a little bit. But on the flip side, that Griff said that we were, trying, like we were going for cargo container. Say it again. We were going for cargo containers, so obviously we uh, nailed it. 
Hey, right on. And then uh, uh, Griff says that you got a nice boarding up window and uh, that uh, he's worried about you making that your own toilet paper. But I will say it seems like it's just a leaf. You're not really making it, which is good. But anyway, let's move on to your next point. What was it? So, so. All right. Numero duo. That's number two. Um, oh. Been growing stuff. So, you know, fancy schmoozy. What's it got? Three houses. Mm-mm. Ain't none of that going on down here. Mm-mm. But we still grow our own garnishes. This one, parsley. Oh, mate. So good. Are you living Goes off parsley? Or, or nothing. You, are you living off parsley? Or is, you eating, is you eating full on food or are you living oh. off parsley? Mate, have I got a treat for you. I've got to introduce you to my mate Fred, all right? Fred? Parsley, my teeth. Uh, Fred. All righty. Well, this still is uh, no head, Fred. Teeth. Okay. Good. Oh, Fred's a little bit stuck here. This is Fred. Can you see his head? Okay, Fred is a dead snake. Not... Yep, Fred's a dead snake. No head, Fred. This is wow. This okay, one. that's that's wow. He's that's a the... whole dead snake. <laughs> yeah, he's a uh, he's the uh, of the breed the COVID uh, COVID nineteen. He is. What? He's a COVID nineteen snake. COVID nineteen, deadly. Uh, oh, he him. he can kill COVIDs. No. No, mate, that is a COVID. That's no, that's that's not a COVID. That's, that's maybe a COVID. A, that, Ain't no NASA, no NASA going down here. It's all COVIDs. They're spreading them in the snakes. That's how they get you. They think ah, it's nah, you think it's it. NASA. You think it's CSI. It's COVIDs. We got them. Nah. I, nah. I'm in the future, mate. I know. Okay, well, hey, maybe maybe tomorrow's gonna be different. But where I'm from today, uh, uh, as far as I know, there's COVIDs and bats, and then there's COVIDs and people. But there's not COVIDs and pets. And people keep snakes as pets, so I don't think. But wow, that was a real snake. I, I'm so surprised by that. That um, was that was real, mate. Yeah. Um, uh, I got a couple Although, questions. Although you for know you. what? Oh yeah. Yeah, mate. Uh, uh, no, go we, ahead, got, we got Greg David Jones asks, "What flavor snake is that?" Flavor? Oh, mate. What already told you? COVID. COVID nineteen. COVID flavor. COVID eighteen. Okay. Yesterday, yeah. We're just considering oh, like, dangerous. We're just considering a disease of flavor now. Okay. Also, uh, Socrates wants to know. Uh, Socrates Soju, excuse me, wants to know: Are you what would be considered a bo- boogan? I hope a that's boogan. not. A, oh, I hope that's not mate. a slur because I don't know what that is. <laughs> mate, you talking about rednecks? I know. I speak of your language. I ain't no redneck. I am pure. Outback quality. Wow. Call me an outback steak, you would. Ain't no mistake there. I do, <laughs> I do have some tips for you, though. Oh, yeah, please. I'd love also to hear more tips. These. tips. Oh, mushrooms. Well, are these, these, these are, it's this, that's what you put the garnish on. You put the parsley on that. Put that on old deadhead uh, bread. And um, you know all of the YouTube ladies who they do the makeup tutorials and stuff? Sure, yeah. Yeah. Well, they're going to be out of business real soon. Cause you're not going to be able to buy makeup. You ain't going to be buying your nice sparkly stuff. You've got to go back to the old ways, mate. You've got to use what you find in nature. So here, yeah, my Bushman's cup, I go out collecting nature's makeup. And I've got some tips for you. All right, let me get a little closer. You know how they make them their cheekbones real high? Um, what's I, her name? I don't know how, she's, but I know they do it. Yeah, um, she's one of your ones. Kardashians. Oh ones. yeah, uh, yeah, Kim Kardashian. She's from Louisiana. She's from Louisiana. No, but hey, well, stay we, away. We like. We'll her. still come to stay with you after this. Oh, oh there it was. The the, the 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 accent did get over here. Uh, oh, that, I mean, <gasps> that was weird. I'm You're back. You're infected. Uh, Look out. Uh, oh, 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 right. that was weird. I'm back. Um, but yeah, what you doing? I'm showing you my Kim Kardashian tips. She showed oh, me so, herself. So explain. So explain this? What is what is in your Bushman's cup? All right, so depending on the color of your skin, because we do vary, I'll acknowledge that we're different. We're different. Uh, sure, sure. So you, different you go to the there. dirt patch. You got to find uh, you got to find one that suits your skin tone, so it doesn't doesn't look too ridiculous. Yeah, well, Alrighty. it seems like nothing's happening on that. your face right My now. There's like a little bit of dirt. You got a little bit of dirt there, but. Listen, uh, listen, Claire, I, I hope stop. you have one more tip for us, but I do want it to come a little bit later because we've got to get our next guest involved real quick. Um, All right. Uh, so, but, but hey, stick around because we, we definitely come back to you. Stuff. 
Um, uh, oh boy, the chat really wants to know more about what you put on your face. So before we, before we go to our next guest, real quick, what was that substance? We got people Alrighty. in the chat guessing that it's either crushed bugs or, or manure. Look, a little bit of both. You need a little bit of compost. You need a little bit of dirt. You need a little bit of brown leaves. And you need a little bit of deadhead freight. Freight? Well, it seems dead like... Deadhead Fred poop. It seems like your advice was to build yourself a house and, and, and start farming, but it turns out what you've done is just found a house and then took a bunch of stuff off the ground and called it farming. But look, we don't have time for you to defend that. I'm just going to go ahead and state it as true because it's time for us to bring on our next guest. Uh, our next guest uh, emailed me saying he had the perfect solution to this situation. His name is Quarantine, I believe. Uh, Quarantine, thank you for being here. Hi, Lester. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here and share my apocalypse knowledge with the world. Yeah, very excited to have you. Have you. Now, you, you see, it seems like you're in a part of the world I've never seen before. That's right, Lester. I'm located on Party City, a new island that's 30 miles off the coast of Rhode Island. Whoa, that's cool. There's a new island? I never heard of new islands popping up except by a volcanic eruption. That's right, Lester. No one, knows, no one knows why this island was never discovered before, but I found it, and I'm starting a new community there. So far, wow. we have about 11 residents here on the island. 11 residents? Wow, that's pretty good. You're starting out strong. Do any right. of them have a COVID? It's a very exciting time. No, there's no COVID here on Party City. Well, that's exciting. That's great. It's the perfect place to escape. You see, as the island representative, it's my job to protect the people of Party City and ensure that no one gets sick or feels any sort of sadness whatsoever. Wow, that's a big job. People have sadnesses all the time. Like, for example, you know, somebody's wife might say, you can't come back in the house. <laughs> Maybe in your life, Lester, but not mine. Here yeah, at Party City, everyone's mind. happy. Really? That's amazing. You, that's amazing. How do you do it? Well, you see, as island representative, and I was elected too, it's my job to ensure that people get everything they need. And so I go around uh, creating new structures, building orchards, spreading joy throughout the town, ensuring wow. people never want to leave because they can't. What? What do you mean they can't? What was that? You said what do you mean they people can't? never want to leave because they can't. What do you mean they can't leave? Why would they ever want to leave? They're in paradise. Well, I don't know, they let's say maybe, leave. you know, COVID is over and they just want to go for a quick vacation to, let's say, you know, maybe they just want to take a little boat ride onto Rhode Island. You see, Lester, as island representative, it's my job to ensure that people have everything they could ever possibly want and they would never want to leave in the first place. That's such a crazy idea. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. No, I get that. I get what you're doing is trying to make them happy so they don't want to leave. But let's say like they had to go home to maybe, you know, because maybe there's not a Popeye's Louisiana Kitchen franchise location on your island. They just wanted a little bit of that sweet, sweet spicy chicken drip. So they went back to Rhode Island just to have a quick bite and then come home. Would they be allowed to do that? We do have an airport at Party City. Really? However, it's for island representative use only. Oh. So, oh. So, like, if I was to, if I was to go there, I would never be able to not be there anymore. Correct. Dang. I don't want to do that. Once you come, though, you'll never want to leave. Okay, this well, is a sell me solution. on it. Sell me on it. What's, what you got? You got Popeyes? Uh... We'd be, if it would convince you to come, we'll make one. He will? You see, oh. Party City is only one month old, and therefore there's a lot of room for development. Most wow. of it I've been doing myself. And so if uh, I'm totally open to making a Popeye's if it'll get you to come and stay. Sure, if you can get the authentic recipe and all the necessary ingredients to make them straight, it's by chicken, I will, I'll be there in a second. But I got to ask you, is you being forced into this labor or is you doing it by choice? Well, as the founder of Party City, I'm doing this as a passion project. I want to spread joy. Wow. That's cool. Hey, I, I don't know if you can hear the police siren, but that's within my bunker, not outside it. No, it isn't a soundproof bunker, obviously. Bunkers are bunkers are bunkers. Now, um, uh, there's no uh, police in Party City. I don't recognize that siren. <laughs> oh, OK. That's great. Uh, uh, there's no police in Party City. How, how do you deal with any kind of lawbreakers? This is a utopia, Lester. What? I have to spell it out. This is a happy place where people, there's no crime. There's no sadness. There's no suffering. Once you come here, you become part of a bigger community. Wow. Okay. I mean, community. That is the Party City motto. Wow. Do you, so do you, have community you, is everything here in Party City. How'd you lure these 11 folks who's living there onto the island? 
Lure, Lester. <laughs> Lester, these folks came willingly. Uh, much like oh. I was able to reach out to you, I reached out to reached out to all eleven residents, and uh, they I, I painted them my grandiose vision, and mm. got them to buy in, buy in on everything. And once they came, uh, all they had to do was uh, convince other people to join. And so once wow. the first two came, they managed to get uh, two others to come, and everyone just keeps bringing more and more. Wow! And um, are you getting like? Is this one of those situations where it's like there's one person at the top and then there's like the next tier down and then there's the next tier down below that and it kind of makes like a pyramid structure and then at the person at the top is taking all the money from everybody else? That's an interesting way of painting it, Lester, and it's actually very accurate. Uh, I am, you can think of me as at the apex of this mountain yeah. and everyone below me is uh, in charge of helping expand the island as well. But as island representative, I am wow well i mean that does sound like a little bit messed up but somebody had a more messed up idea in the chat which is griff wants to know if he's feeding on the souls of your party city residents is that true do you feed on their souls feeding on the souls of my residents no please i'm helping them flourish this is their new home i suppose this is everything they want their souls might be trapped here but that's willingly I guess so. I mean, I mean, yeah, if it's willingly, it's willingly. Now, I, I wouldn't. So, so what would you what did you do to market to them? I mean, you reached out by email. What what sold these folks? Let's say like the first who's the first person who came to Ireland? Uh, the first person to come to the island. Uh, their name is Pandemic. Pandemic. And See, I'm quarantined and we've all adopted new names and new identities upon coming to Party City. This is a safe space where there's no judgment about your past. Oh, oh, that's nice. Do you have a past that you're worried people's going to judge you about? Perhaps, but that was in a past life so long ago. <laughs> two, two to many months ago. <laughs> you did say it's only a one month old, so I'm guessing it's probably about one month ago. Uh, what did you do? Did you do something a month ago that made you have to run to an island off the coast of Rhode Island? Perhaps, <laughs> but that's a previous life. <laughs> Well, I got to say, I'm very interested in this previous life because, I mean, anybody who's hiding themselves out on an island, uh, boy, oh boy, you, you, you probably did a big murder. Lester, I would suggest not for probing for any further into this line of questioning. Listen, last week we established that any, anything that you admit to on this show is not legally uh, enforceable because I did admit to committing a, a vehicular manslaughter. And then my lawyer, who is also my wife, said it's not punishable on a podcast because it might not be true. So, and this is technically a podcast. So uh, <laughs> it's not, but whatever, it, it, it all works out. Um, so if you were to admit to something right now that you did in your past, it would be, you know, safe. A pyramid scheme, Lester. It would be a pyramid scheme. No, what you're doing now is a pyramid scheme. If you were to admit to what you did in your... Oh, you did a pyramid scheme in your past. Is what I what did, did in the past, Lester, what I did in the past was a pyramid scheme. What oh. I'm doing now is bringing joy to the citizens of Party City. This is a happy place, a place where people can be free of the apocalypse. I see. So you, 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 you never come to them. doing your same old tricks. It's, you got caught doing a pyramid scheme in the, in the regular earth, and then tricks. you made your little, you made your little island off Rhode Island called Party City, which, by the way, that's a store. There's a store called Party City, but uh, uh, now you got this island and, and you're doing another pyramid scheme. Lester, if that's what you want to believe, then maybe you wouldn't be a good resident here on, on Party City. No, I don't, I don't want to be a resident, but, but I don't want to be a resident. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, I, I do have a, a question for you coming to us from, uh, mm -hmm. uh, from uh, Unfussy, uh, I don't know those numbers. Uh, he's, he, he or they want to know, <laughs> he or they, not she, wants to know, what do you do if a man falls into the river of a party city? You see, Lester, we believe in survival of the fittest here in party city. Oh, dang. So if they fall in the river, they done for? If they fall in the winter, weather, if fall in the river, it's up to them to get out. All right, fair enough. Wow. That's kind of, that's kind of brutal. I'll tell you that much, but. Uh, if that's what it is, that's what it is. Now, um, look, we're coming to the end of the show. I do have so, there's so much more I want to know about your, about your life. So maybe you come back another time, but uh, we're coming to the end of the show. So I got to ask you one final question, which is, you know, everybody out there is trying to make sure that they have a good time while they's, while they's in an apocalypse. Uh, and we all is. We stuck in home. We stuck in our bunkers, ideally. Um, what is your one thing that you recommend folks do to stay entertained? 
Please Lester, don't say come to Party three, City. I have three survival tips. And I won't make them specific to Party City. Okay, thank you. Number but, one. Yeah. Okay. Number one, find your island paradise, wherever that may be, <laughs> especially okay. if it's Party City. <laughs> yeah, I suppose two, that's not specific. <laughs> two, yeah. find people who will support you in everything you do, like starting a new island. Uh-huh. And three, never let them leave. <laughs> well, that third one is, is pretty brutal. Now, uh, thank you so much for being here. We're gonna, I'm going to ask that same question to everybody who's on the show. Now, Moni Bags did have to leave, but um, uh, Claire Thrills, are you still with us, Claire? Yeah, yeah, we're still here, bro. Yeah, yeah. So you got, you got your last bit of advice now. What's the one thing you would tell people to do to stay entertained while they're stuck in their quarantine? Oh, mate, set up nets. Set them up, set up everywhere. Nets. Get them COVIDs. <laughs> set up nets, catch snakes. I like it. Now, Nick Private, how about you? Uh, one, one thing that you recommend folks do to stay entertained in this time of self-isolation? Uh, Nick, you on mute, my friend. Sorry about that. Uh, I would say uh, learning is a big thing. You can really pick up some great bits of knowledge, and I recommend going to flat earth or the globe is a lie.com. <laughs> well, hey, if, if you do go there, just go in there knowing that you might get convinced that the earth is flat. Um, but hopefully, yeah, it should be a web thing right here. Oh, there's not. I, I blocked it. I'm not letting that happen. Now, uh, for those listening, I got, I got one last thing to say, which is thank you very much for listening. Uh, and I, do, I recall there being a question that I wanted to answer that I didn't get to right away. Oh, yes, that's right. Socrates Soju uh, wrote in that recipe for Popeye's Louisiana chicken 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 is on the is on the website uh, uh, posted by a former employee. And listen, now I tried that. I found that, and I'll tell you what, that's a hoax. That's a big old hoax because that recipe, they don't turn out as good as they do at Popeyes. So don't believe what you hear on the internet. That's what I say. Except for coming from me or one of my guests, because everything we have to say is the truth and the facts. Now, uh, I gotta get off here. I'm a little over time already. So thank you so much for listening. Uh, if you want to know when the next show is, follow at Ezra Partier on Instagram. He's my my. What's it called? Publicist. There we go. Uh, He'll let you know. Uh, Thanks, everybody. Y'all have a great night. Stay safe. Get them chicken strips. Bye-bye.